In 2018, I sailed my boat across the Atlantic from Guadeloupe to Brittany. After arrival, I dived to clean the hull and found the port keel was no longer there. This is the story of that boat, of how the keel broke, the other serious damage that the investigation revealed, and of the five years of legal processes that have characterized my experience of boat ownership. Hello, my name's John. In 2015, I took early retirement with the dream of sailing parts of the world. I sold my house, I bought an apartment, uh, and I freed up the money to buy the boat, a boat that would normally be well beyond my means. My idea was to rent it, so that the rental paid for the insurance and the uh, costs of running it, and then when it wasn't rented, I would try and use it for the maximum myself. I chose a catamaran from a small specialist company in Brittany called Marsudan Composites. The boat was relatively lightweight, and so its performance was better than most cruising boats, enabling shorter passage times and the idea of occasional racing, all the while maintaining a simple but generous accommodation. At the time, the model was called a TS-42, Today it has been rebranded as ORC42. The boat is certified as Category A, the highest standard, by a government approved body called the ICNM. The boat took about six months to build and was launched in 2016. From the start there were build quality issues, mainly minor snags, but some more important. For example, a strengthener in the starboard hull separated from the hull skin. The carbon fibre cross at the front of the boat, which is a structural component, and the carbon fibre rudder and liaison bar were not insulated from aluminium components, so they suffered from galvanic corrosion and split. Bubbles appeared in the copper coat anti-fouling, perhaps because this epoxy type anti-fouling was applied before the underlying filler or primer had dried. Nevertheless, I loved the boat. The concept of just enough weight to be comfortable, but no more, delivered exhilarating sailing passages and made the overall experience much richer than simply enjoying the destinations. In May 2018, I set off on my second transatlantic crossing. The aim was to return the boat to the Marsudan Composites boatyard so that they could fix the anti-fouling issue. At the same time, I hoped to take part in the double-handed round Britain and Ireland race before putting the boat back into rental in France. A diver cleaned the hulls as part of the preparation and he noted that the base of the keels were missing the anti-fouling, something that I had noted earlier when the boat was taken out of, the, out of the water to fix the problem with the carbon damage to the cross. One of the rental clients had touched the sand base, otherwise everything was in order, I thought. The crossing took 19 days at an average speed of nine knots. We were well in advance of the Round Britain and Ireland start date, so I finished the passage in France at the base of the rental company in Brittany for final preparations. It was here, while diving under the hulls to clean them, that I discovered that the port keel was no longer there. I should explain that, unlike monohulls, these keels have no role in the stability of the boat. They simply serve to allow the boat to make progress upwind, and most of any Atlantic crossing is sailed downwind, including the entire final week of this crossing. I did not notice any difference in the handling of the boat. Some people have asked about whether I heard it break, but this type of fast catamaran hits the waves hard almost like a speedboat, so there are continual slamming noises from the hulls and the bridge deck. The roar of the waves and the noise of the slams are something that quickly become normal when offshore. After a provisional inspection of the hull by Marsudan Composites at the rental company base, the boat was motored to the Marsudan Composites yard in Lorient where it was taken out of the water. The port keel had sheared at the level of the hull. In addition, the starboard keel was moving from side to side and leaking seawater on a crack near to where it was joined to the hull. One of the rudders was moving on its shaft and the surveyors also found multiple areas of the boat which they agreed to refer to as tapping anomalies, marked here by pieces of blue tape. The strengthener which had detached from the hull on the first transatlantic crossing was again detached from the hull. Marsudan Composites declared that it was all down to misuse of the boat by me or a rental client. They put the boat back in the water and told me to collect it. About six months later, with no solution agreed, I started what turned into years of legal proceedings. The court appointed an independent expert surveyor to determine the actual reasons behind the damage. He took three years to conduct a detailed analysis and issued his report at the end of 2021. The Lorient Tribunal de Commerce issued their judgment in my favour in September 2023. 
In a short video, it's impossible to detail all of the allegations that were made and the reasons why some were accepted and others rejected. But I'll leave a link to the report in the comments where all of that detail can be found. In this video, I'm just going to stick to the main conclusions. The expert cut the remaining keel from the boat for analysis. In his laboratory, he sliced the keel into 10 centimeter sections along its length in order to examine the cross section of the laminate. He did this both at the bottom to examine Marsudan Composite's claim that grounding of the boat had led to the failure and at the top where evidence of fatigue would be visible. He concluded that wear on the base of the keel was regular and similar to sanding and not the consequence of a lateral force. This erosion could not be retained as the cause of the damage on the top part of the keel. The full engineering detail is in the linked report. In broad terms, the design included a tight radius of laminate near the hull join. Stresses between the layers in this radius had not been considered in the design study and they had led to delamination and the eventual failure of the keels. The underlying problem was that the design was defective. To make matters worse, Marsudan Composites did not build the keel to the design, choosing instead to use a lighter weight of cloth. The expert also made a detailed examination of the other damage. Marsudan Composites argued that the tapping anomalies were delamination due to the effect of repeated impacts and shocks. However, when these areas were cut out for investigation, they turned out to be areas of the hulls and bridge deck where the resin infusion process failed to deliver any resin. In these spots, the cloth was dry and still just cloth. The boat is infused in multiple pieces, so this was not simply one piece that had gone badly wrong. The expert stated that these areas were the result of Marsudan Composites' failure to master the process of resin infusion. I think this goes to the core of the issue. How can a Composites specialist boatyard build safe boats if they have not mastered the process of resin infusion? After the tapping anomalies were exposed for what they were, Marsudan Composites stated that these anomalies, frequent in infusion, are systematically addressed when they are identified during the process of removal from the mould or later. I wonder if this statement implies that there are resin infusion anomalies in all of the boats that they build, rather than just mine. In my case, the way that they systematically addressed the defects was to call it delamination due to repeated shocks and impacts by the client. Alarmingly, the expert's conclusion was that these dry areas were one of two defects, each of which could lead to the loss of the boat, exposing the occupants to the risk of drowning. The other defect that he considered could lead to the loss of the boat were the wooden strengtheners which had peeled off or broken. He stated that the structure in these areas is insufficiently reinforced. Of course, this is a design issue that would apply to all models of ORC-42 that were built to this ICNN-approved design. At a lower level, the expert listed defects which he considered to be major damage affecting the manoeuvrability of the boat. The first of these were the keels. The other was both rudders, for which he wrote that the fabrication was insufficiently mastered by Marsudan Composites. They were both full of water. Additionally, the starboard rudder had detached from its shaft, which had been attached to only one of the rudder walls. He concluded that this was insufficient to guarantee the reliability of the appendix. I was surprised by the approach of Marsudan Composites during the legal process. For example, in his report, the expert talked about three millimeters of material missing from the base of the keel. But in their paperwork, Marsudan presented this to the court as one centimeter of missing material. Also, there was a photograph taken by the surveyor representing Marsud, which the expert noted was false, a fabrication, yet they included it prominently in their conclusions to the Tribunal de Commerce. I would expect any boat guard to want to get to the bottom of damage to one of their boats, to understand why it's happened for the safety of their public clients, and to make sure that uh, they fix these problems in any future boats uh, that they're building. With so much damage to one of their boats after just two years of use, I did not understand their approach. On the 21st of November 2023, I wrote to the ICNN body who had certified the boat as Category A. I attached the expert's report and I highlighted the areas that might be of concern. I also uploaded the uh, concerns to their website where I received confirmation that they received the concerns. 
Since then, however, I've received absolutely no correspondence, no reply, nothing at all. I find that really surprising given the expert's words about the exposure to a risk of drowning of some of the occupants of boats of this type. I also wonder what sort of testing did the ICNN ever do in the first place before certified this unsafe design. Sailing on this boat, you may have the impression that everything ended happily for me. Indeed, I did win my case in front of the Tribunal de Commerce of Lorient. Our student composites were ordered to return the money I'd paid for the boat. I was ordered to return the boats from our student composites. I had won my case, and the uh, sale was effectively cancelled. However, Mark Sudden Composites went into administration in the summer of 2023, reportedly due to a combination of borrowing due to the COVID crisis and because of the cap sizes uh, of their ORC 50 model, which had undermined prior confidence. An administrator was appointed by the Lorient Tribunal de Commerce, and that same body, whose judges were judging my case, took the unusual step of delaying their judgment by two months. This had the result that I won my case few days after the company went into liquidation. In the weeks that followed, the company was brought out of liquidation. It was bought by an umbrella company that owns many sailing brands. I think the company is called Grand Large Yachts, but it may be Grand Large Yachting. But for the purposes of this video, I'll call them GLY. GLY made a point of excluding my case from their bid so that they would not have to pay me the money. Nevertheless, the liquidator receives the sale purchase price and he should be able to pay me from that sale purchase price. However, the administrator refuses to talk to me or engage with me. He shares the same lawyers as um, our super composites, it would seem, and both uh, the administrator and GLY have gone to lengths to stop me seeing whether he has the funds to pay me. I don't know if I will ever see my money. Well, I have returned the boat to Marsut and Composites as directed by the Tribunal of the Commerce of Florida. This sailing trip in the video background was offered to me by the owner of the company that used to manage the rental of my boat. He knows that I miss offshore sailing and I'm immensely grateful for his continued support. So what are the conclusions for the owners of ORC catamarans? My understanding is that GLY uh, excluded in their bid all Marsud and Composites liabilities. So if you own a boat with the design flaws identified by the expert, I think there is no longer any legal guarantee. The same situation for build quality issues. Perhaps you will have better success with the ICNN, but to my knowledge, they still stand behind the unsafe design, so there is no approved fix. And what about potential buyers of used Marsud and Composites boats? Clearly, it's impossible for me to know whether Marsud and Composites ever changed the unsafe designs, and if so, at which hull number. It would seem prudent to verify that the hull strengtheners have been built or replaced to a safe design, and that the new design has been certified by someone competent. If it is not a daggerboard boat, a similar check of the keel design would seem sensible. You might also want to consider whether Marsud and Composite's failure to master the process of resin infusion was limited to my boat. And what about potential future clients of new build boats from GLY brands? Perhaps these concerns are limited to the Marsud and Composite's brands, noting that the GLY purchase opened the potential to build a number of Outremer catamarans at the Marsud and Composite's yard. Perhaps Marsud and Composites have now changed despite GLY having retained the same workforce, including the previous owner. Perhaps you consider the GLY approach to me to be normal, just business, paying Parisian lawyers to block my attempts to understand whether the administrator has the funds to pay. Or perhaps you enjoy reading legal documents in French more than sailing. If you have found this video interesting, please consider giving it a like so it can be seen by like-minded people. Please also share with anyone who's considering buying a yacht from a GLY brand, particularly from Marsud and Composites, or an Outremer that's being built in a Marsud and Composites yard in Lyon. I'd be interested in your thoughts and your comments. I'll read everything that is written, and if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer all of them.